for her. Would you give uh, Pastor Tanisha a warm welcome this morning? Wow. Thank you, Pastor Erna. That was very elaborate. Thank you. Get my little life together. Praise the Lord, everybody. How y'all doing today? Good, good, good. How many are here to receive something from God? To receive a word? Amen. How many? We are in an amazing series about um, emotionally healthy relationships, right? And how many people, you could just hold a relationship in your mind right now that needs a little tweaking. You got a little, you holding a little tension of something. Come on, put that one person or that group of people in your mind, close your mind, think about these people who you're holding in tension. Now say, this sermon, say this sermon is not for them, it's for me. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be like, oh, I wish Bobby was here, because he, no, no, this is, this is for you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's just close in prayer. Let's just ground ourselves. We had a great grounding practice yesterday. Let's just ground ourselves. God, we are here and we are ready to receive from you. Lord, we've come just to dive into your word. I pray that you would open our hearts. Do what only you can do. Only you can reveal. Only you can illuminate. Only you can change and shift paradigms in our hearts. So God, we say we're open to it this morning. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So um, you got to get in a live group, y'all. I don't know where you are. Get a card. You got to get into a live group because this, um, this series that we're on is really helping us to be more mature, not only in our walk with God, but with one another, right? You know, relationships, they're God's idea. Like, we didn't come up with it. He put us in community. He says that that's a great idea. And he said that the world will know that we are his followers when we have love for each other. Yeah. Amen? So the, the, there's a section in our, in our series that's called Stop Mind Reading and Clarify Expectations. That's a whole word in itself. It's a whole word. Stop mind reading and clarify your expectations. Now, just think of where that could fall in your life, right? This is why this, this series is so important. So we're just going to touch on one aspect of this. Um, how many people could need, need a word about that? Or um, you already masters of your own relationships, and you could come up here and take the mic. Okay. I know I need it. This whole sermon is for me that I'm sharing with you. Um, so... Before we dive into it, I'm convinced that there are two people in this world, just absolutely two people. There are people who follow directions, and there's people who freestyle. All right, there's only two people. All right, if you are the person who likes to you get something new, something you got to put together, you must read directions, raise your hand. That's you, yeah, that's my people. All right. Say you got something that you got to put together. You're like, directions? Let's just do it. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Uh-huh. There's two different people in this world. I don't understand you the latter part, but I love you in Jesus' name. There's two different people. So how many people have gone to Ikea? You fell for the trap. You're like, I could do this. You get home. You put it together. You're doing all the things. Either you read the directions or you didn't. And then when it's all said and done, there's like a screw still on the ground <laughs> or a wing nut or whatever those little things that they, there's still some, you're, you're like checking over the thing like, wait, where did I go wrong? There's something missing. There's something missing. And I believe that this is the same feeling that we have in our relationships, whether it be platonic relationships with our family, romantic relationships, co-working relationships. Seems like there's always something missing. Anybody felt like that? You put it all together, you've done all the things, but something's missing. So one lost thing in a relationship can make all the difference. 
I want to show you a story that's very interesting in the Bible, and I'm so excited to dive into it with you. Um, it's in Luke 2. If you could turn to Luke 2. This is an interesting story of when Jesus got lost as a boy. Luke 2. Mm-hmm. Jesus out here doing stuff. Anybody need a Bible? Luke 2. We're going to go to Luke 2, 41. It's also on the screen if you don't want to. Uh, struggle with your Bible. And it says, um, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. Hmm, interesting. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone, heard, everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Amen. May God bless his word. This is a very interesting story. You see the dynamics of them going out to the custom, uh, customary Passover feast. Um, Jesus was about 12, so in Jewish custom, um, they have a bar mitzvah when you turn 13. So he was rounding the corner into his manhood, according to uh, his society. And this story takes place, and it's very interesting. Now, as you read the story, in your opinion, who was at fault? Who was wrong here? Come on, yeah, yeah. I know, turn to your neighbor, I don't know if you know him, but be like, who you think was wrong? Who did? Was it the parents? Or was it Jesus? I mean, you got to be really careful with your answer because Jesus was sinless. Just want to throw that out. He was, <laughs> Jesus was without fault. Just want to throw that out there. So if y'all say it's Jesus. No, this is, a, this, is a, this is not a trick question, but it can, it can be a little bit. Who's in, who's in fault here? Went to the festival. They're having a good time. They're about to head home, and Jesus is not with them. And then when they found Jesus, you know, Mary kind of go black mama on them, like, um, where was you at? We've been looking for you. Why would you do this to us? Right? And Jesus kind of, you know, he like, um, he a little, little, is it a little sass? A little sass? Like, what, 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 you, what you thought, Right? So this is a whole, that was the good old version. We're back to regular. <laughs> Who was at fault? In this case, this is um, a case of mismanaged expectations. This is a classic case of mismanaged expectations. Um, our, our, our theme here was how to stop being a mind reader in a relationship. So let's dissect this story, OK? Uh, there's, some, there's some things that happen, some dynamics that I just wanted you to take back with you. Feel free to take notes. They're free. Um, you can take with them. Um, as we read the story, what are some things that, that we can navigate through to help us not fall into the crisis of mis mismanaged expectation? The first thing is that there was a lot of assum assumptions made, right? I think this is the main problem of this story. If you look at the, the, the text, um, I'm asking, I want to have, I got a question for Mary and Joseph, like, why y'all take off without Jesus? Right. Y'all just, just packed it up and moved? 
Well, if you get back to the root of it, it was an assumption, right? They assumed that Jesus was with his cousin and them, his relatives. They just was like, oh, he's with the kids. Like, we'll just keep going. So many times we, we run into this roadblock in our relationships because of assumptions. Lack of clarity results in assumptions. Sometimes we assume the other person's motives, we assume their thoughts, we assume expectations, and unexpressed expectations equals resentment. Sometimes if we just sit in assumptions, they just knew he was with the group. Think about in your relationships, you just knew they understood your thoughts and feelings. You should know me by now, how long we've been together? How long we, you've known me since I was a kid, you know who I am. I just assumed that you were gonna follow up, I assumed you was gonna give me some money, I assumed you saw I was in need. There's a lot of assumptions and when people don't match your assumptions, it leads to resentment. Only because we have not clarified. Now, they, they went on without Jesus, and so they assumed that they were with them. I, blame the, I would blame the gist of the story on them yep. for not, for not uh, keeping up with the boy child. <laughs> Amen? Okay, and then let's, we're going to move quickly. So we run into roadblocks of assumption, and then we run into roadblocks of complacency. If we are not to read people's minds and live into a healthy relationship, we can't fall into complacency. So I, I have a theory about this. I believe that Mary maybe got a little comfortable with baby Jesus, with boy Jesus. If he's 12, then that means it's been 12 years since he was conceived. There's been 12 years that passed from when the angel came and said, hey, you're going to have the Messiah. She's like, okay, cool, cool, yeah, I'm in it. Yeah, let's go. She has the boy... And now, regular life has kicked in. They're going to customs. They're going to vest festivals. They're going to the Passover. They're living everyday life. Could it be that Mary got a little complacent with this blessing? That he just turned into everyday, regular, like, yeah, yeah, that's Jesus. You know, he's just who he is. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm just comfortable with him. Sometimes complacency can be the death of our relationship, because we get comfortable with people. We forget that God has put people in our lives to be a blessing. We forget, like, like Jesus, that they are a child of God, too. People in our lives are children of the Most High. So there's a lot of times when, um, just like Mary, we become comfortable with our blessings. These people were meant to be in our lives, no matter how difficult they are, no matter where they fall, and there's, there's a purpose that they serve in your life somewhere, especially if they're family, because you didn't ask to be with them, right. right? So people are in your lives, let's not become complacent with the blessings that God has given to us in the form of people, but remember that they are children of God. So first, uh, our roadblock is that we assume sometimes, sometimes we fall into complacency, and then a, there's a third one. Sometimes we get a little amnesia. Now, I want to touch on this with, with Mary. Because we just talked about how maybe everyday life has made her forget who Jesus was. She just turned him into a, he's just a regular boy. I don't know when this promise is going to happen. But if you, could, if, if you go back in your Bible and the angel told Mary exactly who he was, she told him that he was the Messiah that he was the son of God. And somewhere along the way, maybe she forgot. Maybe she forgot the promises and the expectations that God had already set out for, for her. Maybe she forgot that he was already the son of God. That's why Jesus was like, um, didn't you know where I would be? Because Mary, if you would have went back to the original promise that the angel gave you from the jump, you would have remembered, oh, where is Jesus? Where, oh, you know where, he, you know where he at. He at that temple. Come on, let's go right back to the temple. Because he didn't belong to her. He belonged to God. Now, this is where when you lay out very clear expectations and people forget 
your expectations. When you lay out and you're like, you know what, I'm going to be so clear in what I'm saying and people still trespass against what you're asking them, that is a sign for a red flag. It's time for you to be like, oh, I just told you very clearly what I needed and you don't want to respect it and come to it, then that's where we have to fall into um, an unsafe category. There's people in your life who are in there for your development, for your edification, who are in there to nurture you, to hang in. And they might not be perfect, but they're in there, they're trying, like, okay, I got it, next time. But then there's people in our lives who are there it's kind of to serve as a thorn in our flesh and that we should have red flags about. Like, okay, you not like, respecting my expectations, my clarity, I'm gonna have to mark you as unsafe. Love you, love you, like you, but you're unsafe right now. So I'm gonna keep you in the unsafe category and love you with the love of the Lord from afar. Can I get an amen, anybody? So she should have already known who he was. There's people in our lives, sometimes it's not other people, sometimes it's us. People have told us over and over again what they want or what they expect for us, and we become complacent and say, well, you know, you know how it is. You know, they understand me. They'll love me. They'll take me back. They'll, take, they'll say sorry. I'll just keep saying sorry. And they'll, we have to check our own selves and not have amnesia when someone tells us exactly what they want from us. I started to thank you all. Thank for a few claps. It's the word. I mean, I'm, we just gonna go for it. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. okay. I'm I'm good. All right. So moving on, we're almost done. Ways to clarify our expert. This is just a reminder sermon. These are things you already know because you guys are amazing. But these are things I just want to remind you on those situations that you're holding that are very tense. How can we clarify our expectations? How can we how can we move forward? How can we um, not lose the things that God has promised to us? How can we not lose the blessings that God has put into our lives? There's a lot of relationships that start out so wonderful, and somewhere we lose it. Somewhere it gets into the lost and found box of our lives. Anything that's in lost and found, like you really were juiced to have it at one time. You ever see a sad box of lost and found? It was like things people really were like, they like water bottles, coats, like they really love this stuff. But somewhere it went astray and it's lost. That's where our relationships land sometimes. So how do we get these relationships out of lost and found? How can we find what's missing? There's ways to clarify our expectations. And I just have a few suggestions, if you will. The first one is uh, know your truth. Know your truth. So if we're going to clarify and be really clear about what we want from other people, you first need to know what you want. <laughs> you need to be very truthful with yourself on who you are what you like, what you don't like, what are your boundaries, what are your convictions, how far will you go, what are the lines, and what are the boundaries? In Psalms 51 and 6, it says, Behold, I delight in your truth. In the in, you, behold, you delight in truth in the inward being. You teach me wisdom in the secret heart. There's somewhere in us that we need to be truthful in ourselves on who we are so that when we get into relationships, we're not masking, we're not showing up inauthentically, we are not presenting a self that is not ours, we are not going okay, saying we're okay with things that we're not okay with, we're not being annoyed. A lot of times we're annoyed at things that we haven't clearly, we have not clearly specified what we like and what we don't like and what you can tolerate and what you can't. Know yourself. To your own self be true. You have to know who you are in the inward parts. There's a place between you and God. And if once you tap into that place, you can show up authentic, authentically you. Like this is me. This is where I'm willing to bend. This is where I won't. And this is who I am. And we could compromise somewhere in the middle, but let me just show up as myself. How many people need that word? I needed that word. <laughs> to be true. Maybe you need to go home and write a list of all the things you like and that you don't like. Things you will do and what you won't do. Boundaries you will cross and where you won't. What are your convictions? Do you know what they are? 
Know yourself so that you can clarify what's really on the inside. The second thing is communicate that truth clearly. Matthew 5, 37. Oh, we are going. I should have it memorized, right? There it is. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. It's the word. Look it up, Matthew 5. Communicate that truth clearly. Once you know who you are and what you want and what you expect from various relationships, whether it be family, co-working, romantic, platonic, whatever it is, communicate that truth clearly. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything in between, it gets a little gray and a little murky. Yes, that even means when you feel like doing things or when you don't feel like doing things. There's a thing called an holy no I learned about this week. The Lord has given us the ability to have a holy no. That holy no is what brings rest to our lives. There's some things that we have to say, yeah, no, I'm going to have to pass on that. Yeah, that's a no for me, dog. No, I'm going, I'm, I'm going back to the house. There's a holy no that you can enter into that keeps you from feeling like I'm, not, I'm missing out on everything. I have FOMO. I need to be there. They need me. They need me to be there. I need to run the whole thing. I need to show up. There is a holy no that God wants to develop in us. Truth in the inner part. Yes or no. And there's also a part of a holy yes, but you follow through on what you say yes to. So that makes us be real clear on our yeses. Like we shouldn't just be handing out yeses like Frisbees. Your yes should be yes and your no should be no. If you say yes, you need to follow up on that yes very clearly. And if you say no, then it's good. Right? There's a lot of us, a lot of me, me, who uh, sometimes we don't want to hurt people's feelings. We don't want to come across like me. I don't want to be like a diva. And you say yes to a lot of things that you can't follow up with, and it just makes us look really flaky and inconsistent. And you become the flaky one. It's like, but my intention was to do it all. Nah. So the yes and a no. Now, this, is, this was great. This word is so for me because the way I show up with my yes and a no, Yes, and my yes, and my no, and my no. Sometimes my no comes across very passive aggressively. Anybody else have that? I have the passive aggressive spirit that the Lord is delivering me from. If there was an award for passive aggressiveness, I would probably win it. I would be the queen. We, we might be in contention because I have like a sash and a, like the crown. Like I won. The passive aggressive award. You know, things like, um, these are things that passive aggressive people say. Like when somebody says something, we're like, wow, okay. Mm, wow. Or fine, yeah, it's whatever. It's fine. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, I'm not mad, but. I'm not tripping. And I, I hope it was all worth it, I'm just saying. See how I would win, Sister Risha? <laughs> or, you know, I was just joking. Come on, that was a joke. You know, get it? Why are you overreacting so much? Why are you, what are you, is a red flag on that? Call a flag on the play? Passive aggressive is not letting your yes be yes and your no be no. Speak clearly from your heart, but our next truth says to communicate it in love. Just knowing who we are, knowing what you will and won't do, what you're not comfortable with, being clear on when you say it. But this is the part we leave off a lot of times. This is where the people, the opposite of passive aggressive are the aggressive people, where we need to communicate what we feel in our hearts, but communicating in love. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head of Christ. This whole series is designed for us to grow up in our relationships. Um, if you go through the series, you'll see like um, one of the main markers is that we grow 
as individuals and in age, but sometimes we're still a five-year-old on the inside. In our relationship, we're still throwing temper tantrums, we're still sulking, we're still walking away mad, we're taking our balls and going home. Like we're doing all these things and God's causing us to grow up. So speak a truth in love. There's also a holy anger. You know it's good to be angry? Anger is a good emotion. The, even the Bible says be, anger, be angry and sin not. So the anger is good, and the anger is good that, that when you're angry with somebody that you are safe to express that anger is a good thing. But when you communicate how you feel, it should be done in love, not passive aggressively. Amen. Oh, thank you, Sid. Yeah. Come on. I don't, I don't, I don't need to talk. That's good. Thanks, sis. Okay, and our, this is our last point. If we are to go through all these roadblocks of relationships, the last point we want to make is that um, there's compromise involved. I love the story of Jesus because after it's all said and done, real talk is parents left them without checking on them. Really, the onus is on the grown-ups. Um, even after it's all said and done, you know, he didn't argue. He could have even had like a full, you know, like, let me tell you all the ways how y'all were wrong for leaving me. You knew where I was. Why y'all leave me? Where did, where did Jesus sleep for three days? Just wondering. What did, he was just out. He's just chilling, hang with the rabbis and stuff. Well, anyway, um, he was, he, even after all this happened, and his parents came back. They kind of, you know, scolded him a little. He was like, well, y'all know who I am and where I would be, so it's good. It says that he went back with Mary and Joseph, and he was obedient to them. That is so huge for the king of glory, the one who came to die for our sins, the one who came to save us, took upon himself to be humble and go through the process of humanity. He could have skipped all of these steps and been like, man, let me just come on this cross and just, no. He loved us so much that he's like, I'm going to go through every stage of development to show you that I can empathize with anything you go through. There's a point in our lives, if the king of glory could stop it all and be like, you know what, I'm, I'm really right in this situation, I'm going to let it go. How many can use a little bit of that in your life? Because I will argue the point to the end until you see that I was right, right? But Jesus was like, you know what? It's good. I'll go with you. No problem. Not to say that we are to be doormats or be complacent or just lay out for it, but there are some times where we have to pick our battles, saints, and there are some times where we don't need to go to the 10th degree, and there are some times where we could be like, you know what? It's good. It's all good. Let's, for the sake of peace, let's just let's go get some tacos, you know? So this is the thing Jesus wants us to do, learn how to compromise in all those relationships that are tense. You can't always have your way. The other person can't always have their way. When, when you grow up into maturity, there's a sense of equity and fairness. And there's enough. There's, there, we don't come from a scarcity place in the relationships. There is abundance in relationships. Can you receive that? That there is abundance in relationships. There are no scarcity issues where you always have to be right, other person has to be wrong. There, we have abundance of love available to us. Even in those hard situations, even when the people who are hard to love, there is abundance for you. So as I close, Jesus was missing in this scenario because of miscommunication. So what's missing in your life because of miscommunication? What are some things that are missing in your relationships solely because of miscommunication? I feel so bad for, for Mary. <laughs> She's like literally had one job, <laughs> just to raise the Messiah of the world, no big deal. But can you imagine how she felt when he was lost? Like, I've literally lost humanity's <laughs> It's like losing the cure for cancer forever. Like, I've lost the one thing. I've lost the one thing. And sometimes we feel like that, like, ah, oh, I just had one job. I just had to be a good mom, or I just needed to be a good parent. I just need to be a good husband or wife or friend. I just had one thing to do. 
But I love this because if we look at this whole scenario, was Jesus even really lost? Was he ever lost? Did he ever lose control? Did he ever not know where he was or was he ever in danger? So even when we're navigating these relationships, you're really never lost. There's always a God who is more sovereign and who knows it all and who is wise and who is able to help you navigate these relationships. There's never really lost. God redeems all things. He redeems everything, even the bad relationships, even the worst relationships. When we give it to him, he redeems all things. So let's just stand as we close. I want you to just hold. Can you do, um, I need you to survive. Yeah. Oh, look at y'all already holding hands. Y'all cute. Look at Let the Lord use y'all. Yes. As we close, I want you to hold those relationships that we started off in the beginning. Hold them in your mind. Think about the person you're having tension with, the person you're beefing with right now, the situations. Think about your work, your home. Where do you need peace? Hold it before God. Lord, we just want to lift up our relationships. Even as we stand holding hands in this congregation, it symbolizes the unity that you want between the people in our lives, God. This is how you want us to be. I am you and you are me. We cannot live apart from one another. So God, we lean into this idea that you created of relationships and we say, God, will you Help us to clarify. Will you help us to not fall into these miscommunications? We need your help, oh God. So we love you. So if you could just drop your hands and just begin to lift your hands. This is where I want you to to think about that loved one you're having problems with or that you need strength in. And let's just hold them in our minds as we sing this song. Pray. I pray. I pray for you. You pray. Think about that person. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. lifted and we're holding our loved ones in our heart you might be here and you say you know what I do have a missing piece in my life and I believe that missing piece is Jesus none of this happens without him he is the key he is the link if you're here today and you're like I need Jesus in my life he's missing he's the missing component this is why nothing is working together. He is the glue that holds everything together. Think about every relation you every relationship you have. He is the glue. He is the plug. He is the one that makes it all work. So God, we pray over hearts here that they would be open to receive you. If you want to receive Jesus today, just begin to lift your hand and say, Jesus, I need you. I need you. None of this works without you. God, I need you. How many people need him in your relationship? Begin to cry.
pray out for those people. Begin to say their names out loud. The people that you need help with these miscommunications, God. Call their names out and say, Jesus, I need you. I need you in this situation. Some people need to lay your hands on your own heart and say, God, I need you to help me with clarity. I need you to help me to speak my truth. I need you to give me courage, oh God, to say the things that are on the inside of me. How many people need holy boldness and a holy no? To be able to say yes and no to things. To be able to say what you mean and mean what you say. Let God have his way in you even on today. One more time I pray for you. Because you are a God who is well able. God, you're never missing. You're never lost. You always know exactly what we need. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We have just a little time. If you want prayer, do we have our prayer team here? If you feel like you want additional prayer, if you want just someone to come and touch and agree with you and be like, look, I really need someone to just to help me with these situations. I just need a word of prayer. Or maybe you have something going on in your life. You just want someone to touch, have a touch point with you. Just feel free to come on down. We would love to pray with you. And we would love to just um, go before the Father and just touch and agree with you.